Recovery Channel, where life's pains are healed. This morning, we'll be looking at what has been taught. The month is coming to a close, and we need you to get this message clearly into your spirit. I'll be talking about can you meet the demands for your testimony? Every testimony carries a demand. Every testimony carries a demand. When we meet the requirement, a testimony will of surety be delivered to your hands. Very quickly, we'll just look at James chapter 2. Alright, I want to read verse 21. And I want us to read it together. If you have your Bibles with you, let's go. One, two. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had, when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou have faith wrought his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was so filled which said Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. 24. You see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Now what the scripture is saying is people professing a faith without a corresponding action to what they profess. But here we find the scripture goes on to say our justification is the works that follows what we profess. I believe in God who prospers. I profess it. Do I apply corresponding demands for that prosperity package to flow? Here, the father of faith, Abraham, was justified. God had promised him a child. And God spoke to Abraham, and God told Abraham, Go, there's a mountain, offer unto me your son. And the Bible says, he went. And something happened. God, in chapter 22, I guess 15 or so, he said, because you have done this, because you have done this in blessing. So if he had not done it, nothing would have followed. So he was justified. I checked the word justification. It's an act of exemption. Something a man does and his sins are forgiven. But here is applicable this morning to acts that commit God to you. When I was pastor in the Sioux Larry Church Fellowship some years ago, this man came, a regular member, very committed, with big stomach. He walked to me and he said to me, he said, Pastor, I'm in a mess. In fact, he waited for the close of the service. And he said, Pastor, what I want to talk to you, I need you to sit down. <laughs> you know when somebody tells you to sit down, it's a serious matter. He said, sit down and listen to what I want to talk to you about. So I sat down and I was waiting for him to speak. He said, as I speak to you, my rent is due. I said, great. He said, his children are home. They're not in school. I said, wonderful. And then he said, his car has packed up. I said, wow. Only you? He said, yes. He said, last weekend, they called him, the HR in his office, that he's not meeting up. He's a marketer and told him that if he doesn't produce by the end of the month, he'll be fired. Ah, it's a compounded situation. Then he said, the people he markets, they're not responding. 
And then he was doing a part-time program with one of the universities. And he said he's not been able to go for classes because he's not paid his fees. So his case was so compounded. And I looked at him. And I said to him, do you want me to help you? He said, yes. I said, OK. Go and get me a seed. <laughs> Have you ever seen a snake? Or a wounded lion? He turned. He looked at me. The only thing I know that kept him back from slapping me was the fear of God. <laughs> it's like telling a cripple to run. The only thing that stopped him from slapping me was the fear of God. He looked at me like, did you even hear me at all? Then I asked him a very strong question. I said, do you want me to sympathize with you or you want a miracle? And he said, a miracle. So I said, go get me a seed. You know, church folks, they like sympathy, but they sometimes mistake it for counseling. Some people just want you to hear their story and say, hey, yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Do you know we have some adults that are grown babies? They've never left their mother's prayer. Even at old age, with all the trappings of an adult, they enjoy people who sympathize and they resent. You know, sometimes in church, you say, Pastor, you are harsh. I'm not harsh. Because if you are close to me, you know I'm not a harsh person. I can be fair because a coach, when he's in the field, he's interested in his team winning. So he shouts and then gives them commands. He's looking at the end of the match for celebration and everybody satisfied that their time out was not wasted and their time of training was not in vain. Touch your neighbor, say, neighbor, do you want sympathy or solution this morning? Well, this guy walked away. He got home, he told his wife. The wife, now, I thank God for godly women. <laughs> the wife said, ah, not true to tell you. And she reacted, and he reacted and said, what's your problem? Then the woman said to him, he said, you know, I don't like that your church, I don't go. May I go to my own church? But where did that man tell you the truth? He said that shook him because if the wife could tell him to obey a church she was attending, she said that's a serious one. So he, he had some little money. It's a long time now, the story. He, I don't, I've forgotten how he got that, but there was this little money he had, which could not pay his rent, which could not sort any of the problems, but there was some money. So he took it, he came. Uh, for the next service and um, we had closed and he came to me and he said pastor you said I should bring something I said yes so he said take so I took it from his hand at that point pastor Alex was standing by me and I just took it I said pastor Alex go you see they go down to the cash out there because we're using this hall and we're paying weekly 5,000 per use I said he brought 10,000 I said, go downstairs and pay for next two Tuesdays. I purposely allowed his ear to hear it. Now, this was what he said. He said, when I set it in his mind, so you were just looking for money to pay rent for the hall. And then he said, pray for me. I said, no, go. And then he looked at me and said, would you pray for me? I said, go. The guy left. He, he looked sick. <laughs> In his mind, this man just robbed me of my last 10,000. <laughs> he walked into the night so unhappy. He got home and he told his wife. The man just collected the money and said he should go and pay for two Tuesdays. And the wife said, It's for the work of God. God will answer. <laughs> Do you man? The man like, okay, went to bed, woke up and saw this cause. It was his customers. He went out. Within three hours, he had closed some jobs. By the close of the day, business had opened. Within a week, this is 
too true to say. Do you still remember the testimony, Pastor Tony? How many of you remember that testimony? Thank God. God bless you. Within a week, this guy did not only clear all those debts, he came with a tithe. Thank God. This morning, it's a long time now. This should be about 10 years or 12 years. We have about four or five people who can confirm it. The Bible says a man's works is what justifies him. So what works? Your works. Now, the, if you look at Rahab, Rahab was not an ex harlot Rahab was the harlot. She was still working as a harlot. But the Bible says she was justified, meaning she, whatever her flaws or weaknesses were, God overlooked it. The word justification is, means like forgiveness or whatever. God used that as a justifying factor to bless her. She received the spies and then sent them through another way so they were not killed. So here this morning, God says, this is what made God to relate with her. She had faith in God, but it was expressed by her act. Are you with me? And the man was so excited. He gave the testimony. He gave it, I think, at church. He gave it again at our meeting at SLS Hotel, uh, uh, Ogba. He was so excited. He fixed his car. Came to church. He started giving seriously to the ministry. And God blessed him. The same office that went to fire him, they promoted him at the end of the month. He was the head of the youth marketing unit. I just said that to say this this morning, that it's not just about the testimonies you want to see. It's about qualifying. But I want to talk about healing also. So you don't think it's about monies. Especially those who are close to us and ministers. Sometimes you see some funny things about sick folks. I remember some years ago, I was having some terrible results. I would do prayers for the sick, especially cripples. And I was having real disappointment. Several times I would pull out a cripple in a meeting in my crusades. In Jesus' name, walk, walk. <laughs> the cripple would just beg me to let him go. <laughs> I had terrible results. I didn't have problems with death, dumb, some other cases they bring to our services. But when it comes to people with disabilities, especially like cripples, when I see them, my feet goes flat and my heart gets cold. And I, 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 I try to avoid them. So one day, this should be like 15 years or so, 20 years ago. I visited with Pastor Chris Yakilome. So we're talking. And I said, I don't really have results. He laughed. He said, everybody has gone through that. He said, when you are in a meeting, you don't just lay hands on people. And he said something. This is Bible school. He said, you look out for people whose faith have been built and they are ready to respond to a command. So you start with them. And he said, who you minister to or you bring out in the meeting. And it applies to all the gifts of the spirit. Like for example, when I'm ministering, sometimes I'm looking at faces. I look at faces first. Do you know some boy you're preaching like this? They look at you with so much intensity. You know they came to the meeting to hear God speak through you to them. I'll never forget some years ago in Namibia. We had closed this crusade after three days. And this young man was still anxious to see me. He was middle, front, one seat or the other. Always looking at me like, you know. So like, the bishop brought him to, my, to the office and said, this man wants to see you. As he walked into the service, uh, into the office, I looked at him. He looked at me. He prostrated. You could see a man that was so hungry. I didn't even know what he came for. Then I took his hand. I said, Lead and let me pray with you. He said, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Manogo. Thank you. Thank you, Muruti. Thank you, sir. I said, You're not from Namibia. He said, Yes. I said, I traveled 
all through the night i saw your tv broadcast then we're rolling our tv channel on my tv free to air so he traveled from i think malawi i think came from malawi and traced my meeting down to namibia travel i think two nights to be there he said i came for all through the night boss just to be in your meeting sir he said i just want to hear a word from god i said i know i know i know you know if i had asked him it wouldn't have been the best it wouldn't have helped his faith so i looked at him i said say not a word don't say a word everything in his eyes there yeah, was saying speak speak lord speak speak lord speak i was pulling something i looked at him in a split second boom i got it and i said to him i said a man appeared to you in white suit he said yes 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 it was creep. but there was something in this man his faith his action are you with me and then i said a man appeared to you a minister of god i called the name and i told him he said yes and he said, i said he touched your head and he told you god has called you the guy just fell on the floor started crying he said that's all i need he ran into the night did he allow me to finish yes 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 <laughs> it was so funny but you know the guy was so hungry to hear god and he came all the way believing that he would hear the voice of the lord well let me go straight to what i was saying so in my meeting then pastor chris said something which i had known over the years in my meetings i've seen it he said don't lay hands on somebody who is not expectant he said because you get nothing no result he said you wait and see a man that has faith you will sit in him he says start your meetings with such people and you will have results and you know what over the years i've traveled i've seen lots of such i could feel it i could see fit in people so before you give the command boom, they respond and then it turns into a miracle amen, amen. amen. i said amen. amen let me give his testimony in namibia there was a man who came from namibia he had a spinal damage his, his spine had been destroyed, eaten up in tuberculosis. And so his waist was twisted. Now they had to put a rubber band, a, a strap to hold his, his spine together. And he was using crutches. So he was twisted this way. You know, you know what I mean? Twisted. It was, his body was going this way and his legs were this way. And, you know? So they had to use a rubber band to strap him, to straighten him up. And then he was with... Uh, crutches he came into the meeting there were, there were other cases when I was ministering that evening we had parliamentarians top government officials you know they were in the meeting in the front row and that's not a place you make a mistake you know that and it was the opening night of the crusade the meeting had gone halfway when he came in and the ushers assisted him and I was preaching ministering this man was like you know and when it was time, I moved towards him because it was clear that this was the only Spirit said, start with him. This man had not worked for three years or so thereabout. I didn't even know there was a band inside because his dress covered it. And the Holy Spirit said, take the crutch from his hand, tell him to run. So I went to him, took the crutch, and I said, run! And then he started running, and the whole the meeting changed. It was the first, the guy drives a trailer. He was the first recipient of a healing miracle in that service. It was an explosive meeting. Amen. Now, if you are sick, for example, your faith must have a corresponding action. What did I say? The Bible says, let the weak say, and what? So when the weak start acting strong, what happens to the weak? He becomes strong. So if you are sick, you don't stay at home 
for the whole universe to gather to greet you. That's sympathy. You must move from sympathy emotions to healing and health. Are you all following me? Hello. Please give me um, give me Acts chapter nine. I want to look at uh, a story there. Acts nine, thirty-two. And it came to pass as Peter passed through all the quarters, he came down unto who to the saints which were in leader. Go to thirty-three. And he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed for many years. Eight. He had kept his bed for what? He kept his bed. <laughs> he maintained it. I'm chic. I'm chic. He kept it. Now, when he got there, he was a he was a Christian. Are you listening to me? He was what? The Bible called him what? A disciple. But he didn't understand all of this. He was sick of palsy. He was paralyzed. For how many years? Yes. All right. Look at what happened. Go to thirty-four. And Peter said unto him, "Did Peter pray for him?" Huh? What did he do? He said, Peter said unto him, Christ make thee whole. Oh, brother, arise. Make that bed. He arose immediately. Was he healed? No, he wasn't healed. He just responded. This is Anaias. The boss was sick or pass, he was paralyzed. Maybe stroke or whatever. Now Peter comes into the place. For eight years, he has been like that. All Peter did was, he declared to him, he declared. That's what preaching does. You make a declaration. He just said, all right? He now got to him, he said, Aeneas, Jesus make it the whole. Arise, make thy bed. Oh, yeah, get up. Get up. He gets up. What happened? He just responded. The, now look at what happened when he responded God's power went to work in his life Hallelujah. do you understand that he now says rise up Jesus Christ of Nazareth make it the whole as Aeneas responded do you know what happened the power of God went through his body now let me tell you all the while he was doing it somehow he was not comfortable with it but as he obeyed and acted his faith. Do you know sometimes most people don't understand. In healing school they teach you things. You see, the man of God comes and says, praise. People jump in. They are acting their faith. They are not really well. But in acting their faith, they become well. One week, two weeks, they come back and they testify. Do you understand that, what I just said? Do you, have you observed over the years, can I show you something? Let me use a natural situation. Have you noticed that your friends who act big, talk big, eventually become big? Yes, sir. As a man think it. Have you observed that some of your friends, they always like say, I don't have money, I don't have money. They have the hide. You go out to them, they don't have money. You end up buying the food. You end up paying the bill. You enter taxi, you end up paying. Do you know 20 years later, if you meet them, you are still paying for them. Somebody tells them, collect, 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 collect. The thing they tell them, you are a slave, you are a slave, you are subservient. Do I make, do I make sense at all? Check, friends you fed 10 years ago, you meet with them, they, they still respond to you to feed them, even if they are better than And that's how you become, that's how the hand of the giver is always on top. Do you know, people who join church, 10 years they never give. 10 years after they are still where they are, new people come and give them and are bigger than them. Do you know some people, no matter what you talk about money, never will respond. And God responds to our seed that we sow. He doesn't respond to your face. He responds to the seed you sow. So what did he do? The Bible says he arose. The Bible did say he was healed. 
He arose immediately. Go to verse 35. And all that dwelt at Lida shall saw him and turn to the Lord. He began to act it and he became it. He started leaving it. He became healed. Many years ago, Ora Robert was healed in a crusade. The parents took him. He was sick. And the, the man of God laid hands on him. Ora Robert is a great evangelist. He's pastor now to glory. But one of the biggest Christian universities in America had crusades all over the U.S. Healing, bringing healing to countless millions of people. Now he got healed at a very tender age. The parents took him to a crusade where he got healed. Now the night after he got healed, the mother saw him sleeping. It was about 10. The mother said, Ora, if you want God's healing power to be perfect on you, you must act healed. He said, get up, dress up, take off your pajamas, and walk into the day as a healed person. He said, if you stay there, the sickness will come back to you. <laughs> Do you know we have done a lot of things, projects without money? We just start and the money starts coming. I see some people say, hey, pastor, I want to start, I want to start two years, I want to start three years, I want to start four years, I want to start, I want to start, start! You talk too much. I want to start, I want to start, I want to start, I want to start. You want to travel, but only you that wants to travel. You are making, you don't even have a passport. You don't even know the name of the country. You don't even know the requirements of the embassy. All you just do is talk, blah, 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 blah. I want to start, I want to start, I want to start, I want to start. That's how you get a miracle. And all that dwelt in Lydia saw him and turned to the Lord. Probably the following day they saw Aeneas walking down the road. At least the good thing, Aeneas is no longer on the bed. Keeping it, keeping it. Are you keeping your bed? Actually, are you keeping your bed? Talk to your neighbors. Are you keeping your poverty? Are you still telling everybody that you are poor, broke? He kept bed until somebody told him, No, Jesus, I've healed you. Stop keeping your bed and walk. Every day, Aeneas went back to his house. In the evening, he found strength had increased in his body. And that healing power of God walked through his body and perfected it. If you love a friend or a loved one that is sick, tell him, make a bed. Right? Some years ago, I did surgery. I traveled out of the country. I did surgery. I wasn't ashamed to stay back at home. I was coming with the crutch, the cane. Right? Two of us. Doctors gave me three, three months to recover. One week I stayed at home. Everybody left. I told myself, no, this is not me. This is not the kind of life I should live. They came back from church at about 3 o'clock. I was so hungry. I was asking, how is church? I said, God. I was looking through the window. Is this me? This can't be me. And the following day, I told Pastor, I said, I'm coming to church. He said, ah, with your cane? I said, yes. And some of you were shocked. I came to church. And I was looking at Pastor, ah. But you know what? I didn't use it for up to two weeks. Or a week. I threw it away. Three months. <laughs> When my doctor called me, he said, how are you, Anthony? Are you okay? I said, I'm in London. <laughs> he said, London? Doing what in London? I said, holiday. It's not three months yet, Anthony. I said, I'm well. <laughs> <laughs> I traveled. I told Pastor Lucy, I said, let's do a family vacation. I went to British, uh, renewed our visas with the children, we traveled. When they called me, they didn't meet me. Your enemies will not meet you where they left you. God bless you. Corresponding action. That's how you meet with the demands for your testimony. Don't stay in one place telling stories telling stories. You don't, need, you don't need money. You need faith. And then faith is expressed by actions. Right? Yes, sir. By what? By actions. Let me show you another one to blow your mind. Acts chapter 14. Still on healing now. 
All right. Look at verse 7. Then he preached what? The gospel. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being crippled from his mother's womb. Kai, this is a bad case. This is what they call foundational affliction. He came into this world with it. So he never even knew how it was, Mr. Walk. Now, who never had walked? The same heard Paul speak. Who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed? And what followed after? Paul lifted his voice. Look at, look at 10. Say with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. Now he leaped. Stop. Is leaping walking? How does somebody leap? Show me. Show me. How does somebody leap? Walk. Something like. <laughs> Don't forget, he had never walked before. He had never walked. So leaping is not walking. It was a transition. He was obeying. So the thing didn't look normal. Then finally he became what? <coughs> became normal. <laughs> My friend came for the camp meeting. He said, people think I have money, right? You see, most of you will listen to him. I, I know why I bring him. I know why I bring him. We grew up together. Where we stayed on the same bed. When they say somebody is poor, one day I found he was using my toothbrush. That was how bad it was. Yes, I, it, there's nothing I will say that he has not said. But one thing I love about him is bold. And faith is about boldness. You see, when you start doing some things, you might not look it. You know, you'll be faking rich. You look it, but when they get close, they say, boy, you know who anything. <laughs> but just keep on doing it. Just keep on doing it. One day you'll become it. <laughs> you remember when he came for the camera, he told he said he will buy body of Range Rover. He will go and buy the engine. He will couple everything, take it to Panabita, they will spray it. He said because he wanted to be a big man. Now he's looking at it right now. He said he likes loud things. If it's not loud, he doesn't, he doesn't like it. He keeps to, sometimes he, last week he called me, he said, oh boy, did they pursue me? I said, what, what happened? He said, that property where I go poor hand, did they pursue me? I said, well, God has always been there for you. He will keep doing it. We inspire each other. But you know what? He called me this morning that money came. He has made some payment. This year you will lay the foundation. This year you will finish that project. Stop living the life of a sissy. Fearful. One day I walked into the room of a lady who was sick, 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 sick. I don't know what made me take her phone. And I saw she had just visited the website. Checking how heart failure looks like. What you read influences you. You either feed your fear or you feed your faith. And let me tell you something. All those of you who go on the internet checking how people die, high blood pressure, diabetes, symptoms, you keep studying, studying all the negatives. If care is not taken, you start thinking it, living it, then start having all the symptoms. Your boy may say, hey, that is stroke. Watch, son. The next thing, your language changes. If anything happens to me, if anything happens to me, we don't know when we'll die. You both should take care of yourselves. Do you know if I'm watching a movie and I see where people are crying, they show dead, but I change the channel. I don't like people cry. 
I'm a happy person. I like people happy. When I get to be to be near sometimes, my mom, even my mom knows that. She will hear me say, Hey, I hear them but chop your life. I say, tell them to say what you have one fifty years. You need to hear me and my mom will talk. When I call my mom, she says, Ah, who is that? Chop your life. I say, Tell the story where you are one and seventy years. I like life. Life is beautiful. Hey. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Do you know I'm looking at our lucky church? Massive, powerful. Things are happening, though, I won't tell you. One of my daughters came yesterday. I was telling you that they had a revelation. I said, because God revealed some things to you, let me show you. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has he entered into the heart of man. What God has prepared. God is not prepared to bury you. Not in 2019. There's no graveyard in God's prophetic program. There is no grief. God has no grief for any person here. Amen. The only thing God told me to tell you this morning in a place of prayer is that 2019, he's promoting you to the next level. Amen. God said I should tell you that in 2019, your enemies will not come back to meet you where they left you. Amen. And God said this is the worst level you can ever be in your lifetime. Amen. You are going up, 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 up. Shout a loud amen to some. Do you know, many years to come, we'll look at this building, we'll be laughing. So we, we had church here before. Yes. We are going to look at it. We'll laugh. In fact, the suit I'm wearing today, in the next 20 years, when we we'll put the picture up, they say, ah, pastor, see the way you match the time the suit. You try, sha. You try. Because then, then, don't say, then. We'll be wearing a suit of $4,000. <laughs> Amen. Do you know four years ago I made up my mind to do shopping every January. Once in a year, buy stuff, clothes, shoes, suits. It didn't make sense. It was more like a struggle, and I made it. Do you know three years after I was able to do it still? Two years again, I repeated it. This year is not normal. To buy enough suits for the year, shirts for the year. What you think is what God will give to you. What you want is what he will give to you. That's the truth. Two weeks ago, I was trying to arrange suits. I saw more than seven or eight suits with tags. I don't even know they were there. The prosperity starts from your mind. Then becomes your action. Then as you act, accepting God's will for your life, you become it. From healing to prosperity, prize lands. Go check how much a plot of land is. Check how much, how much it costs to do foundation. Think about all of those things. Think wealth. Think prosperity. Think longevity. Don't be thinking, hey, somebody feed that. Somebody feed that. Oh. I was just thinking. I, was just, I don't know why I'm thinking. Something keep telling me I will, I, will, I will die in August. <laughs> to whom you yield yourself to, you are a servant. You yielded yourself to that thought. Before that thought comes, rebuke it. You rebuke it. I won't die. You, you answer it. But he stood. Hear the story. He stood. Hear this, everybody. You read that story in Good Morning Holy Spirit by Benny he stood in the funeral of his friend and they were burying his friend then a thought came to his mind this is what the devil does he will plant a seed of fear what you do with it determines what happens it can come through a dream that's why when dreams come rebuke it don't go back to bed deal with it do you know, as he stood in the funeral of his friend, as they were laying his corpse, the coffin, he heard a voice say, by this time next day, you too will be dead. 
the moment the thought came, do you know what he did? In the midst of everybody, he said, Never! Satan, I will beat you! And everybody was like, Do you know the following year, exactly that same month and date, he was involved in a plane crash? He escaped. Because he did not accept it. He didn't accept it. I'm going to be around for a long time. Amen. Just attending all kinds of ceremonies. 60 years, 70 years. Chopping, collecting souvenirs. Changing homes, changing accommodation, traveling around the world. How many of you will join with me? In your mind, I didn't say I will travel together. <laughs> amen. I said, amen. 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 Start thinking about 20 years. What will I want to be in 20 years' time? Because when you start thinking 20 years, you'll be around for 20 years. 30 years, 40 years. Don't say, well, let me put savings in case somebody died next year. One of my siblings was talking, he said, I keep, I save money with first bank, I save money for first bank, I save money in case anything happened to someone. I said, come, I, I just, I just look, I said, where will you grow? Why do you just drink fear? Why is it so natural with you? She said, wait till I talk now. <laughs> Mama, wait till I talk now. She was ready for a fight. And me too, I was ready. You know where rhino and lion jam? There are some people who are lions in fear. It will take an equal strength to confront them. And when I deal with people sometimes, they don't know, I'm not harsh. I'm fighting something that can kill you. And if you love people, don't tolerate that moment in their life. Shake that thing out of them, or else you'll be there to bury them. You either deliver them now, now, from that thought, that ugly thought. She said, well, yeah. I said, I said, this thing, I said, look at the way you think. Look at the way. So I took time and explained. She said, ah, thank you. I said, why are you always saying you are saving money? You put so 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 every time first bank in case I die. In case I die. I said, you're already dead. It's a corresponding action. You're planning for death. You're already keeping money aside for death. Like some people keep money for the bad day. Even when the bad day come, they still put for bad day. They're still expecting it. Even when the bad day, have you not seen somebody hiding money under the mattress? I'm not talking to anybody. Oh. <laughs> they hide, they hide, they hide. If everywhere is dry, they're still hiding. There are housewives here who are guilty of that. All of you are housewives here, lift up your hand. Lift your hand. Wives are very cool. They keep hiding. That's why you hide. Just go and check. Go to your wife's room and check. Walk. You see money that is hidden. They say for a rainy day. There's nothing wrong in that. But you see, when you keep your mind in such things, you attract it. You attract it. So I rebuked her. I said, I said, save money to build houses. Not in case you die. You won't die. Don't put that. At, change your saving pro programming. I save for a building project. I save for, for investment. I save for the future of my children's education. Not I am saving in case I die. Someone say, God forbid. Somebody needs to give me a prophet of him for that. Because I delivered you. I just delivered somebody this morning. Look at it, that clap. See that? Don't just follow him. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Everybody stand up. Let me pray for him. I rebuke the spirit of fear. Amen. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. Amen. Every lying tongue of the wicked one, projecting fear of premature death. Death, death, the thought of death that keep recurring dreams of death, visions of death. I rebuke it from today. 
it's changing it's changing i rebuke the spirit from your spirit to go never to come back to you anymore the mighty name of jesus christ be free and be delivered in jesus name uh -uh. see mom you <laughs> i'm going to shop right i'm going to shop right tonight the lord bless you the lord deliver you from every fear in the name of jesus it will never come to pass every fear dies this hour in jesus name settle 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 so they settle amen what you keep entertaining keeps recurring you not think you're a visionary you're not a visionary it's a lie of the devil and i pray today that no lying demon of fear will find a resting place i deliver your dream life i decree from today you are seeing visions of greater tomorrow dreams of your future he said i have the thoughts i have towards you are thoughts of peace may the thoughts of god become your dreams to give you a future and a hope now let dreams that inspire hope inspire faith come into your spirit in jesus name Amen. do you know I, I was in the church in montreal in canada and i made a joke they, they didn't know i didn't have money because we were leaving california to to to, to canada we preached in the church for three days and god said don't take an offering it's a young church in fact they put us in the hotel after the first day they didn't even have money so we took the bill myself and pastor lucy and the children do you know when we're leaving listen everyone when we're leaving god said don't take an offering in the church so we got to montreal and then we left the children in toronto we went by train we first night they put us in this beautiful five-star hotel love it so our friends we didn't have much money again on us we we're just trusting god they bought our tickets to and fro so the morning of the service i didn't have a friend so we we're going very unlike me so when our host dropped us in the front of the church i asked pastor do you have she said mm -hmm. Do you have offering? She said, uh, Do you have? She said, She has. I said, Okay, do you have spare? She said, Not really. So I don't know what happened again. I think they, okay, yes, she now get, you had $20 with you. $20 or $50. So she gave it to me. So we now called him to, to, to go and change it so we could have offering. So, but before he came with the change, they had taken offering and they had invited me to climb the altar so i think he now brought the money and i was laughing so they didn't know why i was laughing i was trying to codedly take the money from him they were taking offering and there was no offering in my in, with me so somebody by my side now gave me an offering i think he just came to bless me no he came to bless me and I just say, wow, God has given me an offering. Oh. <laughs> so I say, people don't even know. I just jokingly told the church. I say, people don't even know I didn't have an offering. Another person stood and gave me an offering. Another one came. I got $5,000. $5,000. think In the service, we had about $4,000. We go back to the hotel. A couple came, took us to go and eat. They gave us about $1,000. We got back. A, cop, a, a mother and a son came to the hotel, gave us about $500. Everything was about $6,000. Then the church gave us, I think, $4,000, making about $10,000 thereabout in the meeting. Meanwhile, we didn't have an offering on us. Praise God. Do you know what I shared with you? has saved me many times from early death that's why i can articulate it i can say it you, you you can feel it in spiritual warfare i want to close the first thing the devil does is to fight you 
by introducing fear and a constant thought. And that's why the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, verse 1. Ephesians 6, verse 1. If you go to verse 12, it goes to explain the things you use for spiritual war. And it says, above all, taking the shield of faith. The shield of faith. He said, which, by which you protect yourself from the fury darts. The fury darts are bad dreams. That you had a dream of death does not mean death is coming. If you accept it, you are also encouraged it. Are you following? Do, do you understand? Someone said, I refuse to be afraid. I refuse to be scared. I refuse to be afraid. I'm not afraid of tomorrow. Amen. Can we give the Lord a big hand this morning? Hallelujah. Lift your hands and just thank the Lord. Make this proclamation, everyone stand to your feet. Declare with me, say in the name of Jesus. I have a tomorrow that cannot be destroyed. The secret of my children, it's in place. The future of my home is intact. I will never know a dull moment in life. I will never be stranded or abandoned. Helpers are waiting to help me. At every turn in my life, there's a way help are standing to help. At every turn in my life, there's a help are standing to help me. The end is not near, and the end has not come. The plans of God are ahead of me, with men structure to help me. My children, they are helped. My family is helped. We are continually helped. We enjoy the help of God. We are obtaining the help of God on a continuous basis. I will never run short of divine help. Celebrate Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand. Thank you, Lord. Put your hand on your head. I bless this week. I decree for you that this week is a blessed week. The curses are broken. The pattern of curses are far from you. The things that trail you will trail you no more. Every demonic dog, satanic serpent, looking for an opportunity to hit you, to bite you. Today we nullify past attacks. It is here by aborted. It is here by aborted. Past attacks from the lying lips of the ancient serpent. We are bought it this morning. We decree your release and your freedom. We decree that the venom will not prosper. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I decree and I declare an activation of help. Let angels go with you. In Jesus' mighty name. Give a little big, big hand. Thank you for watching our broadcast. I'm so glad you stayed to the end of this broadcast. I want to invite you for our special services, which I strongly believe is going to be a great blessing to you as you connect with this ministry. Don't just stop at watching. Make an effort to be part of this meeting where the Spirit of God is at work every week touching lives. Now, every Sunday morning we begin our first service at the Kedja Center, number 19, Oba Accra. Now, Ikeja is more a mainland church, so where, wherever you are in the city, you can easily connect. So, for easy connectivity, we can, we, 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 our church is positioned at the mainland, uh, number 19 of Accra. We begin our services there by 8 o'clock in the morning, we terminate by 10. And then, at the headquarters church at Egbeda, number 11, Awari Street in Ikbalaji, bus stop. 
we begin at a better church from 10 to 12. Now, during the week, we have a special meeting which we tag Healing and Deliverance, which is every Tuesday morning, 9 to 11. And during that program, we minister to the faith needs of the people. We deal with demonic issues. We prophesy as the Spirit of God gives us the ultras and the supply of the Spirit to minister to the people. And we connect to them and minister to their faith need. As I perceive by the spirit of prophecy, people and cases are located and they are ministered to. And we have a powerful prayer line where everyone that is part of the program can be ministered to. That's the beauty about the program. Everyone that comes can be ministered to. You are not lost in the crowd. So we have the special prayer line every Tuesday morning at the end of the healing and deliverance service. Now, on Wednesday, we have our midweek service. It's a prophetic service. It starts 6.30 in the evening and terminates to 9. Now, in this meeting, we teach and then the prophetic most times because we are always expecting the Spirit of God to speak after we hear the Word of God to speak back to us and to minister to us. So, as we receive the prophecies and solution, cases are picked and people are ministered to. Now, on Thursday, back to the mainland, 8.30 in the morning, we have what we call the Breakthrough Fountain. It's a program designed for business people to come for one hour. You know, Jesus talked about praying for one hour. We believe if people can spend an hour in prayer, the power of God will touch them and minister to them. So Thursday morning from 8.30 to 9.30, we have the Breakthrough Fountain. It's an hour of intercession and prayer. A minister, prophetically, cases are mentioned. And those affected are asked to wait to see me one on one. Now I can say from 9.30 to 12 on Thursday, and that's all for the morning session. Now later in the evening for those who can make it because of work or school or business, we have an evening session that begins from 6.30 and terminates by 8.15 on Thursday. Now get connected to this program and be part of any of the church services, either the one in the suburb at Egbeda or the one in the mainland. Get connected and I trust God that you will experience the things you see on this broadcast. The Lord bless you. Keep on watching the Recovery Channel.